I saw uh, rebels with amputated arms carrying a AK with just one arm, and with his one hand he's taking out his amputated hand and gesturing, "Doctor, put it back." And he had gangrene, smelling, blood red eyes, on drugs. The day we had to go on the first flight to South Sudan, from the same flight. I was the nominated nominated officer from my platoon to receive mortal remains of Lieutenant Colonel Mahipal. He was from mechanized infantry, who were ambushed in Bor. Cargo terminal. Se I was getting the paperwork done, receiving the mortal remains, and side by side I was seeing my troops lined up going to board the same aircraft, jiske luggage bay se ye coffins aaye the. And I knew that where we are going to go right now. is not what everyone has been perceiving it to be so we've done a bunch of military podcasts with special forces veterans but the infantry is one of the most and i'm using this word positively but one of the most chaotic aspects of the army life in the infantry is all about chaos going into situations and figuring out what to do on the spot thinking about teamwork thinking about combat very actively it's a very chaotic lifestyle as major summer tour spoke about in today's episode the biggest joy i get out of doing these podcasts is absorbing experiences from so many of my guests and there's a limited amount of experiences you can gain from someone who spent most of their time in urban environments but what about someone who spent so much of their time on the siachen glacier What about someone who spent their time in Africa? What about someone who spent their time primarily on the battlefield? This is a conversation with a warrior. Another epic military podcast. For more podcasts like this, make sure you follow us on Spotify. Every episode is available on Spotify forty eight hours before it's available anywhere else in the world because we're a Spotify exclusive. Major Summer Tour is on the Ranveer Show today, sharing all his experiences and all his perspectives. Major Samar Tour, welcome to the Ranveer Show. Thank you, Ranveer. Thank you for being here, sir. You have such a friendly face, and I know that there is such a dominating badass energy behind that face. <laughs> so I <laughs> very very Punjabi energy. I love it. How's it going, sir? How are you? Uh, so far, so good. Okay, as usual. Okay, you know, that's how it goes. You know, life is like that. And even if it is so far not good, we better make it good. <laughs> so that's how it what is. What does an army career do to a person's mind? Uh, it helps you uh, acclimatize to your surroundings, even in the most uncomfortable manner or a situation you are in. I mean, it makes you accept the situation in which you are. Mm. you know so it it uh, it readies you to face all odds out of your comfort zone mm. because as i always said you know uh, life is intense that is why heartbeat ka pattern is like a frequency you know mm. and if that frequency goes it becomes straight there is nothing to talk <laughs> about yeah so that's how you know army molds you mm. as per the frequency of fluctuation in your life yeah. so mentally it's shaping you to take on all odds whatever you go to face in land or abroad wherever you may be so yeah it keeps you ready i would not want to face a guy like you in battle <laughs> like, I mean, uh, every officer that I met, there is this one very thin layer of intimidation. I feel maybe in the first microsecond of meeting the person, which goes away. The moment you smile, the moment you talk, you know, it fades away. But in your warrior avatar, I would not want to face an Indian Army officer. And I've met enough to know that they're all badasses. Like the Indian Army is a very aggressive uh, force. That's what I'll say. And I I don't get how. With the internet in the modern day, with internet penetration, how these terrorists are not understanding the ferocity of the Indian Armed Forces? Why would they consciously want to take on people like yourself? 
we are trained to lay down our lives mentally and physically we've been trained we've been programmed in a much better and a refined manner where i am while in service i was and i still am mentally and physically ready to go into battle and i am ready to accept the consequences of my wife becoming a widow or my children becoming often i mean that is the kind of patriotism uh, and that zeal and that uh, you know peppy enthusiasm and josh that we still have and that's not going to go it's like a, a positive virus that has been imbibed into us that tomorrow you know if they say okay you guys are veterans but you need to go in there i'm not going to think twice i'm going to go in so if they think they are fedaines we are even more worse than what they think we are it's just that you know we are controlled we are working in a uh, 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 organization where we have to protect democracy you know we got to protect civilization we got to create a atmosphere of comfort for our citizens you know we got to protect them from the bad element and you know they say that in search of uh, uh, a hero there uh, you know devils exist but you know in terms of destroying the devil you need a bigger devil you know i mean in today's scenario it has come to that that to uh, teach a devil a lesser you got to be a bigger devil you know yeah uh, we are not here to be heroes we are here to tell them to lay off because it's already too late for their mindset to change mm. so now it's time that we already give them a message that it's better to lay off because you're going to meet a dead end anyways yeah i want to ask you both about your first combat experience and the one that was the most intense or the one that stayed with you the longest i'll let you pick whichever one you want to talk about first uh i'll tell you first time when uh I handled uh, the mortal remains. I was at uh, Siachen, so you know it's fight against nature over there. The environment is so harsh, and you know that was my first posting. You know, so I felt like a physical stud and everything. You know, but that is one terrain which pushes you beyond your mental will. You know, why? It's it's very difficult. There is you have to fight for oxygen to breathe. you got to fight to gather your energy after every 20 steps you got you got to carry your own battle load in that environment there are blizzards there are crevasses the temperature is in minus you got to fight against frostbite you got to fight against uh, high altitude pulmonary edema you the condensation effect in a glass if you put cold water and you put it out in the mm. warm environment so you see the droplets so in the lungs water accumulates due to the variation of the uh, body's temperature body the... temperature and the outside temperature and the air that we are taking in so you know you 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 got to fight it out and these are things beyond your it's beyond human control can you describe siachen uh sort of from the first time you saw it in terms of what was in your mindset about how it would look how it would be versus what it did actually look like and what it actually feel like uh <clears throat> once i got to know uh where my unit was so i just boarded the aircraft i was wearing my normal combat my jacket and everything was uh, in my bag so the moment i landed i had a particular place there and the moment you know that gust of wind hit my face when i walked onto the stairway onto the tarmac that is where i realized i said this kind of chilled air i have not experienced yet and that is where the troops along alongside me said sab kuch pen lo like dekh lena type where something was yeah because i was i was that unprepared you know I I'd never been to such a terrain ever and that's the highest battlefield on earth how old were you I was probably 24 23 24 24 years of age and what are the temperatures like it used to go up to minus 30 wow 
माइनस थर्टी माइनस थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस या I've been in like minus five and it was like horrible cold. I don't even. <laughs> there's no way my imagination even reaches that point. Why? Why don't you describe what minus thirty degrees Celsius feels? Minus like? thirty used to be like, you know, when I feel helpless, I start to laugh when things go beyond my control. So at times I used to sit there, I used to start laughing, and they used to ask, "Sab kya ho gaya?" So I used to be like. यार मुझे अपनी बेबसी पे हंसी आती है बेस्ट मोटिवेटिंग फैक्टर दैट आई कुड फेस यू नो इन फैक्ट वेन यूज टू गो इवन टू द लू वी टू टाइम इट दैट विल नॉट बी इन द लू फॉर मोर देन वन हंड्रेड एंड एटी सेकेंड्स रियली दैट्स लाइक थ्री मिनट्स सो इट यूज टू बी दैट बैड इफ यू गो बियॉन्ड एट थ्री मिनट मार्क वॉट है आई मीन इट इफेक्ट्स योर बॉडी यू नो दैट काइंड ऑफ टेम्परेचर and that kind of altitude you know your your body organs and your uh, metabolism because see uh, you are at such a height and there's no oxygen so firstly you don't get sleep you need sufficient oxygen for your mind to be at ease and calm and to sleep so oxygen kam hai neend kam aati hai number 2 you need oxygen to digest your food again due to lack of oxygen you don't feel like eating food or wahan pe you know two potatoes i mean uh, you've taken two stones and you've hit them together right mm. but potatoes and tomatoes used to be like that it used to take where in a normal condition it takes just half an hour for food to boil and get ready or at times even over boil within half half an hour it used to take one hour for it to just become normal in its uh, thawing process so that was the ground reality that hit us you know and we had rations there but uh, we couldn't consume because you know it is humanly not possible to consume it we didn't because you know you go you fight it against nature what is the food that you're given there see we have tinned food preserved food like we have canned pineapples canned uh, chikus uh baked beans and then uh, uh we have dry rations okay then we have for what, for what, energy we have chocolates what is a dry ration dry ration is like you know uh dry uh, dry kind of masalas and everything okay because they can't be in that uh, semi solid state mm. then we have mres meals ready to eat for the putting it in boiled water what does it taste like uh it is good but uh, the technical aspect of it is you know it causes constipation <laughs> so obviously operationally you know when you carry all these things with you in your backpack so obviously i can't keep going to the loo so they they manufactured in such a way you know technically and scientifically you know with the specifications that once i consume that particular mri uh you know uh, probably i need to go and clear my stomach probably uh, uh, in 12 hours or maybe 18 hours then in a usual environment where i need to go after 4 5 hours or something so yes it does have a effect on your body mechanism and metabolism mm. i mean theek hai we are officers but at such at such heights you know 20000 plus feet above sea level and minus 20 minus 30 you know you are you can't be uh, nagging your troops all the time you got to make an environment comfortable to them you got to keep acquainting them with the training you got to keep training them on the weapon systems you got to keep updating them about current affairs and all and probably like when my father was in cihn during his times there was no connectivity at all you know they used to just write letters inland letters you know they used to just write the blue ones you know you could fold them and just seal them and send it this is in the 80s yeah this is in the 80s so i'm talking say, about my dad was in cihn in 86 87 roughly when it was recaptured 84 it was taken over okay and op megdoot came into place on 13th of april uh, 84 i believe so and uh, my father was there in 86 87 I, th- i think it's important very briefly to just touch upon uh, why it was even retaken 
uh there's a lot of gen z listeners teenagers who are not familiar with the siachen story everyone knows what siachen is everyone knows how brutal it is not everyone knows the back story so if you could just brief the listeners a little bit siachen is tactically situated it's a glacier basically and the reason why it was taken in haste was it is a tri junction where it borders with pakistan and china and that is the tipping point where the distance between afghanistan and india is the least mm. so what comes in between is the karakoram range so when i was supposed to the you know uh, we used to hear the blasting taking place on the enemy side you know you, what so, do you mean what do you mean blasting is basically the, the, the chinese were helping them construct this karakoram highway okay so the whole day you know we used to keep acha it the blasting hua it the hua you know you could see geopolitics live in front of you. yeah we saw it unfold you know and uh, uh, we could even see the satellite systems that these uh, the enemy used to use uh, to overpass our uh, location and also we we, we 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 are aware okay if they are watching us probably we are watching them more Uh, which is why strategically that particular point is very important to yes, the Indian map. Yes, very critical. Yes. Which is why it's guarded almost throughout the year, and I don't want to say the winter because what happens then in the winter? Honestly, winters is very excruciating. You know, there's a lot of blizzards that take place. It's it's um, kind of left alone, right? Like there's no one who serves during the winter. No, 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 no. It's it's occupied. See, it's occupied. See, yeah, with time and technology and the kind of equipment we have, uh, these are occupied throughout the year now. One second, sir. When you're saying minus thirty degrees Celsius, I am assuming you're talking about the summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how cold does it get during the winter? See, uh, it remains almost at par at this temperature itself. Itta hi rehta hai. In crevasse, it goes up to minus. 70 minus 80 so there we are told during our training in siachen battle school that if you go into the crevasse you do not have more than half an hour to survive so this is what they tell us in training that every step you take think twice follow the drills but what's the logic of a crevasse like uh, is it that as you're walking on land suddenly something can open up and you can fall in see it's it's all ice that you're walking on बेसिकली उधर लैंड भी नहीं है इट्स ऑल कॉम्पैक्ट आइस सो आइस इज ऑफ डिफरेंट डेंसिटी कहीं पे बहुत सॉफ्ट आइस है कहीं पे इट इज लिटरली हार्ड आइस क्रिस्टलाइज आइस यू नो आई मीन इवन इफ यू वुड फायर अ बुलेट इन टू इट प्रॉब्ली द बुलेट वुड नॉट इवन गो मोर देन लाइक फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर्स बियॉन्ड यू नो इट दैट टफ आइस so uh, it, the density of ice is different then you know the, the these uh, 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 the ice is shifting and melting constantly to is pe kya hota hai beech pe gaps aa jate hain so what usually happens is the top layer of the ice is visible because you know ice uh, snow keeps falling constantly so the 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 uh, snow flakes they keep interlocking and you know it becomes like a carpet you know so uh, so we keep probing every step we take first we probe with the rod to check whether you know the rod is going to go right in means there there a lot of depth to it so let's check so with the ice axe then we you know remove the ice to check so if there is a gap in between it's your lucky day you didn't go in so probably you change your route but usually we mark our routes and we know that this is the actual route that we keep taking but you know when there's a lot of snowfall that track gets covered again so you got to again you know it's a task again that you got to recheck 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 because the ice keeps shifting so we can't take things for granted ki yaar theek hai rasta hai to chalo chale can't do that be very careful about where you travel every step you take have you fallen in no 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 uh, like and it's a luck factor what do you fall in it's yeah you could say it's all luck it destiny you know it's you know that's what i say it's like on the edge it's like you know you got to accept few things in life you know i can't move on you know with a fear factor are kya hoga kya hoga nahi that's what i you know we are, that is how we are programmed you know like get it on yaar if i'm in i'm in my fight is now how to come out of it 
I think this is a great point to actually begin speaking about Sudan and we've had Colonel Berwan on the show who okay. gave us a little brief kind of insight into the situation in South Sudan. Uh you've been there for 2 years of your life. Probably I would argue in the prime of your career you served in Sudan. Yes, immediately after Siachen. Immediately after. So you're done with Siachen. You've seen a version of hell. I see hell almost. You got a break of a bit, maybe, or maybe you didn't even get a break. Six to seven months. That too, preparing physically, training hard, getting to know about the South Sudanese culture, which is what traditions, customs. Okay. It's it's uh, see the division of Khartoum and Juba. Khartoum, when I say, is North Sudan, and Juba is South Sudan. Is was based on religion. So Khartoum is Muslim dominated. and south sudan is christian dominated okay got gotcha. you then they consist of two uh, multiple tribes but the main tribes which are there are dinka tribe and the nuwa tribe so president salwa ki uh, is a dinka and vice president reek mashar is a nuwa so in 1992 there was a rift between these two tribes where a lot of dinkas were massacred and uh, probably that uh, fallout took place unfortunately in 2013 where the dinkas then hit back at the nuwars however the nuwars were the ones who tried to do a military coup and try to assassinate president salwa kir and their things went beyond out of control and uh, there there are few footages where uh, i have i have reported about tanks firing at people there by the rebels and we were also a constant target there so in 2013 we were to move in and you know excitement was there but things drastically changed the day we had to go on the first flight to south sudan from the same flight I was the nominated nominated officer from my Pelton to receive mortal remains of Lieutenant Colonel Mahipal. He was from mechanized infantry, and four uh, other ja, other ranks, who are Jawans, uh, who were ambushed in Bor of Maha Regiment. So it was a very uh, eerie and a very uh, goosebump kind of feeling where. cargo terminal se i was getting the paperwork done receiving the mortal remains and side by side i was seeing my troops lined up going to board the same aircraft jiske luggage bay se ye coffins aaye the so that was a point of time as an officer i was in a dilemma and i knew that where we are going to go right now is not what everyone has been perceiving it to be everybody's mindset changed un posting is you know usually seen as the prestigious posting is the cream of the indian army you know we are we are representatives of our nation you know so it's the best of the best that go there on foreign soil to operate and you know with that mindset it is something like you know that black hawk down kind of a scenario mm. like the troops moving out from the air base into the city to get the guys out so it was something like that that we are going to enter into a country where you know shit just hit the fan and there is no escape because the terrain is such there is no place for cover what about the sudanese army it's called spla so do these people liberation army so basically they have a warlord kind of a system so every area has the jaise sarpanch hote hain hmm. indian language mein so waise waha pe jo uh, gaon ke sarpanch the so they are the people who gets the maximum number of fighters is given a rank accordingly so you know a colonel could be a guy of age of 30 year old and he's just recruited a lot of young younger yeah he's guys. got like 200 guys with him so they join the spla they get trained and everything 
and and i think being a warlord is very important in a war torn country like that and probably even being aligned with a warlord is very important just simply to provide for your own family you've seen that movie 13 hours secret soldiers of benghazi no sir you know what was the saving grace of that particular cia safe house the local militia they got them out from there you mean alive. these so you got to see initially the the spla is a amalgamation of both the tribes dinka and nuwa tribe so all is well till they are together and all is smooth sab acha hai no differences happening but the day when a failed military coup took place on the 6th of december 2013 around 6 to 700 nuwas were massacred in juba and once the news was out that Riek Mashar has fled Juba and it was a failed attempted coup on President Salva Kiir who was a Dinka. So what actually went chaotically very wrong was in military barracks uh, troops went rogue. Wow. So everywhere you know we were hearing gunshots everywhere. Like the soldiers turned into the soldiers terrorists. turned on to themselves the Dinka Nuar. There were very few. units which had a compact uh, team of dinka nuwar together but otherwise uh, there were a lot of defection taking place the nuwar commanders who were you know the formation commanders they defected from the spla prop with weapons with every arsenal uh, everything right from tanks to weapons to ammunition to troops to logistics and um, uh, ad- administrative support they said acha tum sab newer tribe ke ho pack your bags let's move out and we'll uh, regroup and we'll come and we'll hit them back again so it was so chaotic you know so initial 6 months of 2013 till the month of december things were like quite okay like it was fine we were focused on our uh, training aid and uh, weapon systems and uh, regular routine and schedule that we had interactions with the un staff and training modules taking place for troops regarding human rights and protocols of fire fire drills and everything and sab kuch sab theek chal raha tha but at the back of the mind 10th of april 2013 ka yaad tha sabko that we had received mortal remains to so be careful eventually 6 december things went wrong and on 20, on 19th of december evening 4 o'clock there was a attack at a temporary operating base in akobo where around 3000 nuwa tribe took over a un base which was being run by uh, which was occupied by our troops un troops and how many troops do you think were there Uh, we had approximately a platoon in there, thirty people, thirty thirty boys, and uh, they had forty six Dinka refugees, which included people of all ages, including pregnant women, young girls, boys, elderly uh, couples, young couples, forty six. So eventually, when they came, they overpowered uh, the whole site, and all were armed. and uh, they did not give any reaction time and they shot all 46 refugees and they looted the whole camp and uh, lot many things happened which probably i will not disclose because 3000 people 3000 rebels with ammunition yeah proper also. armed along with machetes because for them uh, ammunition is very critical so if they find an unarmed person so they use a machete rather than wasting a bullet what was the life of civilians <clears throat> at this time and this kind of a situation is breaking out uh overnight we were not prepared overnight we had 15000 refugees walk into our camps so where a where a uh, barracks and accommodation was the so refugees were right outside it was it was filled like jam packed in fact the cemented pathways that we had we to literally tell them please get aside we need to 
पास पाए थिंग्स वो दैट बैड द होल सिटी द सिटी ऑफ मलाकाल वॉज टोटली ओवर रन देर वॉज अ चार्ज ऑफ थाउजेंड ऑफ रिबल्स ऑन टू आर अराउंड आवर लॉक बेस लॉज इट द सेम वन यू शोड यस एंड कैरी इट्स लाइक इट्स वे वर्स दैन वॉट आई सीन इन द मूवी ब्लड डायमंड विच शोड सॉर्ट ऑफ अ वर्जन ऑफ uh sierra leon being overrun by rebels this was way worse what you actually showed me yeah i mean you see the actual footage there were child soldiers i saw uh rebels with amputated arms carrying a ak with just one arm and even cocking that ak with their foot and again getting ready to fight i have seen soldiers of the spla come at the un gate and with his one hand he's taking out his amputated hand and gesturing doctor put it back and he had gangrene smelling lot of flies and probably a bit of maggots there he was injured for probably 2 days my god and uh, usne tourniquet bandhi hui thi Bl- uh, blood red eyes on drugs this guy came up to the gate and the protocol is they have to surrender their weapon note down the names he was sent to the hospital this guy was operated and there's a doctor a colonel in the hospital where i made a call i said one guy is coming he's carrying his amputated hand in his pocket and just just see to him sir like i'll do that so hat obviously was disposed of got it done his wounds this guy gets up on the second day comes back at the gate and says give me back my weapon i said sorry we've destroyed it that's what our protocol says it's been destroyed how did he react he didn't react much he just walked out with uh the glucose uh, the drip that he had he just walked out what does this do to you as an observer as an observer i tried my best i told the hospital staff outside the spla people were already there to take him with them with them and uh, i realized this is not going to stop if this is the level of approach that they have despite losing a hand after 48 hours the guy is not even healed he is ready to again go back without a hand into combat i said where does it end yeah you know you said something very interesting outside sir you said that the special forces is efficiency oriented and they're supposed to cause chaos in enemy lines behind uh, enemy lines behind yes. enemy lines uh the infantry has to deal with chaos being thrown at them and then figuring out what to do in the chaos and everything that you're saying about sudan is exactly that kind of a situation it's just chaotic you don't know who's against who you just know everyone's aggressive everyone's out for each other's life um now you're talking about the soldier who had his own hand in his pocket and then went back into you know the war zone like it was just normal in fact the moment when he put his hand in the pocket to take out his hand to show it to us my boys already cocked their weapons and pointed it onto his head they were expecting ki bhai ye to grenade leke phekte phekega hamare pe because that has also happened exactly and the worst case scenario was the rebel forces and the government forces were almost in the same uniform ha <laughs> ha they were just they had just one band onto their arm the rebel forces um for the viewers of this podcast we just took a 2 minute pause in the middle it might seem like it's continuous for you on the edit but we took a 2 minute pause because this is where the chat gets a little bit intense so you've taken off your blazer yes i'm like let's get it on now yeah let's <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about this you just spoke about the mindset of the people there so um i want to ask you what it's like when you're facing these people in combat see the moment there was a touchdown from the aircraft on south sudan uh, tamak the kind of perception that you having airport as ho gaya as ho gaya aisa kuch nahi tha hmm so we got closer to reality 
the sooner we started moving to our bases bases were approximately 500 kilometers away from each other the most effective and quickest means of uh, transportation was by hepta so we knew there is no backup we are on our own so it was by on the 19th of december where i was i was telling you october mein ye attack hua tha we lost two jcos one uh, rifleman mandal was shot to the right side of his chest gunshot wound this is all in skirmishes this is when the the nuers came and attacked and killed those 46 refugees and uh, overran the kobo camp and everything and the worst part is that the the nuer officials who were part of the government came much later into the picture they should have been there before to stop things happen they came after everything was over there uh, we got a fair picture that things are going to unfold in terms of demography ki jahan pe nuer tribe zyada hoega din ka se going to get hit where din ka se going to be more nuer se going to get hit so we were to prepare ourselves accordingly ki bhai तैयार रहो एट ऑल आर लोकेशन तो मलाकाल इज द अपर नाइल स्टेट विच इज जॉइनिंग नॉर्थ सुडान खारतूम इट इज वेरी ऑयल रिच सो जब इनका पार्टिसिपेशन हुआ था तो रिफाइनरीज वो लेफ्ट इन नॉर्थ सुडान ऑयल वेल्स वो लेफ्ट इन साउथ सुडान सो द इशू हियर वॉज दैट वहाँ पे फार्मिंग करना मना है बिकॉज ऑयल कंटेंट इज सो हाई that if they try to do farming and they try to do digging and all oil is there so it's restricted you know so that is why firstly there a lot of poverty of farming ko importance hi nahi hai everything and so when this attack took place then on 20th of december then the hepters went in and we got back our boys and everything uh, bmps were there left there they were disabled how did technology. how did those guys survive There's three thousand people facing thirty people. The local newer officials made it very clear to the rebels that you touch these guys, these Indian troops, that the things will go out of proportion. So these three thousand rebels just came for the forty-six refugees. Exactly. Wow. And they they tried not to harm the thirty. jawans much yes but in the skirmish these uh, warrant officers came in tried to intervene and they were so high on drugs the 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 rebels the rebels young guys they shot them point blank in the chest as in as in they said don't kill these refugees let's talk what is the issue let's sit and talk they are unarmed but they overthrew you know they they just took uh, they they uh, almost kidnapped uh, troops with weapons and everything overpowered them and things were really not it was the most unexpected thing to happen there the least expected ever and that was a place which was in isolation nothing there इट इज जस्ट दैट दे गॉट द न्यूज ऑफ अच्छा फोर्टी सिक्स दूसरी ट्राइब के दिन का लोग हैं वहाँ पे रिफ्यूजीज ओके लेट्स गो इन डेट्स वे थिंग्स वेंट अगली यू स्पोक अबाउट दिस गाइज बींग हाई ऑन ड्रग्स या वॉट ड्रग्स आई रियली डोंट नो दे वर टेकिंग सम पिल्स यू नो एंड द ब्लड शॉर्ट आईज यू नो तो दे व चाइल्ड सोल्जर्स most dreaded element why child soldier you walking by in a petrol you going in a vehicle you just no don't know what's in the kid's mind he might just turn cock the weapon in fact the weapons were always cocked these were ak47 ak47 they had rounds in the chamber already so they never had to you know follow any drill it will just point out and that's it it's very difficult for a civilian to wrap his or her head around this you're a trained infantry veteran 
you know what it's like using weapons you've trained people in using weapons yes. you have kids yourself you have two sons yes how do you mix the two worlds of weaponry and battle with a child's mind i i try my best not to discuss anything in terms of combat with my children i mean they're too young my elder son is still 5 year old so he still remembers little bit of uh, my slithering from the helicopter and uh, when we were at udampur you know jumping he used to see these troops do, you know do the free falls and everything he has very uh, faded memories of it but i try not to uh, stress on to that because you see at an early age if i expose my child to uh, combat stories and everything so by the time he is in 10th or 12th for him it will be just a normal thing you know and khuda na khasta kuch galat kadam utha le wo unknowingly what about these african kids so and how how young was the youngest child soldier you saw i'll tell you what is the actual scenario that they face i was at a port location where the ships dock i saw a kid almost at the same age of my elder son which is 5 5 4 or 5 years old he had a lock lock he had a thread tied to the hook of the lock he had at regular interval hooks of the thread come like loops coming out knots in that he put few grains of rice took it off of a pocket rice and few kids gave him worms lagai to dur se i didn't know what exactly was doing with that later on i found out ghuma ke na he's throwing the lock right into the water and he's pulling it pulling it pulling it so there's a fish called talapia in the river nile so i saw him for almost two and a half hours that was a route which was once the war, war began so the inland uh, roads were almost blocked so it was the waterways through which uh, through which the world food program used to get the food and everything to these barges the ships so i just went and i saw and i called him like what are you doing he said i am arranging for food for myself it's a very your parents so he said they are dead so i said who am i with kya the these are my group of friends with no parents so i said so how do you manage so he said we listen to our boss so that's one elder kid compared to others how in old? age probably 7 or 8 year old wow just a bunch of small kids and f- they get something they that's their food and they also taught how to use weapons the child soldiers were probably 8 or 9 years plus of age probably they knew how to use it that is why they were carrying the ak's you know as a young officer of the indian army you know you always are full of josh and jazba junoon and you know you are into about okay let's get this on and i want to see combat and all and trust me i i at times you know when i sit back and i think i think i wished a bit too much which i repent because these are the memories which are etched into my mind till the day i die are you still healing from them it's not about healing it's about uh as a warrior i feel we were destined by god to experience this it has made us mentally more strong and robust and i don't see any healing aspect in it i see a lot of learning aspect in it what did you learn i learned life is unforgiving survival of the fittest eh if you don't make a move either like termites the system will eat you up you will be finished else you make the first move and save yourself if you don't make a move the other person going to make a move and 
योर हेड इज गोड बी ऑन द टेबल सो यू नो कहते हैं ना इट्स बेटर यू स्वेट एंड ब्लीड इन पीस आई मीन यू स्वेट मोर इन पीस सो दैट यू ब्लीड लेस इन वॉर सो फॉर अस एज इन्फेंटेरियंस यू नो इट्स ड्यूरिंग ट्रेनिंग इट्स स्वेट एंड इवन ब्लीड फॉर अस ड्यूरिंग पीस because that fear factor you can't live with you got to live without fear so panga to lena hai without fear i mean the thing that pushes a human mind to face fear is fear itself so that is one it's a antidote covid hua tha to covid ka hi wo tha na virus which was injected into us so to overcome fear you have to face fear yeah while we've had a very very intense conversation right now this is one of the conversations where i've spoken the least because i could just feel the things you were saying uh, and i didn't want to stop you anyway i just wanted you to talk about the truth on the show i think that's what people got to know um it's very important that stories like this are exposed to the public we didn't have access to these stories when i was in college when i was in school and i feel like more people need to know the greatness of our military armed forces So on behalf of the youth sir firstly thank you for your service thank you really appreciate thank you, thank you, you thank you, opening up uh on a personal level i'm proud to be talking to you for such a long time that you gave me so much of your time sir uh i do feel there are many more conversations yet to be had with you definitely uh but seriously thank you for everything and thank you for this conversation It means you're a lot you're welcome sir. you're welcome ranveer and i have a lot of messages for the youth but probably we'll do it yeah you're going to get a flood of dms uh, you know i mean direct messages on your instagram and all that but hone se to hoga <laughs> i mean you got to push yourself then it's going to happen and moreover you know today's youth uh, needs to be guided you know like the agni veer uh, project project you know it's practical it is logical yes sir i mean you know you could get the cream into the forces because that lethargy element is going to be taken out you know that lack of acidical uh, uh, thing, you know mindset ki ha theek hai dekh lenge that's all going to be negated yeah here you're going to get boys who mean business who do well will shine well they'll get promoted on time and they go to do justice to uh, not that abhi nahi kar rahe but you know the government you know there's a limit to the load and pressure of what it can take look at the size we are the second most populated country in the world hmm fir aap expect karte ho that you expect the economy to be thriving and doing amazingly well but on the same lines you want facilities also so where is the government going to make the savings where is the government going to make the gains i mean you know you got to you know ask not what the nation can do for you but uh, what you can do for the nation first hmm to pehle unconditional contribution wala attitude leke aao join the agni veer project uh, the government has put its mind and soul into it has put in good logic into it and the youth is going to get a good direction society is going to become more refined keh rahe hain ki 75% jo jinhe permanent nahi hoenge they will be uh, adjusted into the other forces so you can imagine you're going to get skilled soldiers who would be uh, situationally be more aware hmm. who will be well cultured well mannered they'll be more of gentlemen they'll be more respect to the ladies in the society a uh, environment of uh, that being safe is, is will be there you know like how it is in israel you know the conscripts yeah they go in for mandatory service who do well carry on otherwise those who who wish to uh, who are not taken into the uh, forces get into the civil society and are doing decently well yes so definitely the civil arena is not going to overlook them or exploit their skill set by giving them low salaries they will be imbibed and absorbed in the society the standard of society is going to go up 
तो आप मुझे लॉजिक दो कि वाई इज अग्निवीर प्रोजेक्ट बींग क्रिटिसाइज वेर एज द इट्स गो टू अपग्रेड द कैरेक्टर ऑफ द यूथ इट्स गो टू मेक द मोर रिफाइंड मोर जेंटलमैनली वेल ट्रेन्ड and in an emergency wherever a country requires more troops at any given point of time is just going to be an announcement and these troops are battle ready and on to the front and ready to face so probably even the enemy wouldn't be able to comply or put logical statistical data ki yaar inki strength kitni hogi so this could boost everything in a tremendous manner so you know this is a futuristic concept and if you got to move on you got to accept changes yeah. you can't be rigid yeah. so wherever we are heading we are heading in a very correct direction and i uh, probably we are going to discuss the current affairs aspect in terms of warfare urban warfare and everything so yeah so that's how things are going to move forward you see mm. major tour learned a lot from you on this one conversation looking forward to more that's all i'll say thank you sir jain you're welcome jain Cool. That was the military special of this month. We've decided internally to always have these military specials released on the podcast every single month. If you're not following a Hindi podcast, I strongly suggest you go follow it. It's on our Hindi channel. There's even more military conversations that we've uploaded onto that channel on that podcast. If you don't want to consume the entire podcast, we have a highlights channel. It's called TRS Clips. We'll link it down below. And of course, make sure you follow us on Spotify. Every episode's available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. One request to you guys is that I would like to know who else you guys would like featured on the Renvi show when it comes to the military, when it comes to people related to the secret services, when it comes to people related to any aspect of national security or state security let me know send in your guest suggestions i'm ranveer alabadia and trs will return pretty much in 3 days because we do two podcast releases every single week thanks for the support we'll see you soon